All right, uh, this is Raymond Griffith again, and uh, we're going to continue on with our discussion of inductive and deductive reasoning, uh, starting with some examples of uh, mathematical examples of inductive and deductive reasoning. So for example, here in inductive reasoning, I'm giving you a find a relationship in the sequence. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. Uh, and uh, you present this to a student who has never seen it before, and that student's goal is to try to determine what the next values would be and see if they could fit some kind of rule to it. What kind of rule would actually make this make sense? Now, so here's an investigative process in inductive reasoning. We do some investigation, and then we propose a kind of a rule or relationship. And then we test it out to see whether or not uh, that rule or relationship holds up. And then at that point, we, make, we offer some kind of tentative conclusion. We recognize that uh, we could be wrong. Uh, but until more information comes up, we're going to decide that yes, this rule somehow or another uh, can help explain the data. Now, inductive reasoning can be wrong based upon too limited amount of uh, information. So, for example, suppose that I gave you a sequence of uh, one, two, and uh, four. Okay. Well, this sequence one, two, and four, uh, you could make a couple of decisions as to uh, which way to go uh, to the next step. For example, if you said eight, you would be saying that, oh, I'm going to double this every time. You see that this is double of this, and this is double of that, and so you go and say, well, this is double of this one. Okay. On the other hand, you could very reasonably say seven. Can you think why? Well, you take a look at the difference between one and two. The difference between one and two is one. And the difference between two and four is... Two. And so you might assume that the difference between four and the next term is three. And so you might say, well, here's seven ought to be the next actual uh, number. Okay. Now, the fact is that, as I said, inductive reasoning can be wrong. Or perhaps it can be right, but uh, you not be able to necessarily prove it. It depends upon how much information that you've got. The more information that you have, obviously, the better off inductive reasoning is going to be. Uh, which is one of the reasons why science does so well for us. And the fact that the more information we collect, the more data we collect, uh, the more we're able to put things together and come to uh, some fairly decent conclusions. Well, this is an example of inductive reasoning. Here's a deductive reasoning, and uh, I've got this. Notice I have uh, given two points, uh, negative 1, 3, and 4, 7, find the equation of a line. Well, this is an example of deductive reasoning. Okay, now why is this an example of deductive reasoning? It's because very, usually at this point, okay, what we've done is we have given students some rules, okay? Well, what's part of the equations of a line? Well, we have slope. We say m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We often don't tell them why the slope is this, but we, we tell them that this is how you get slope, okay? And then we tell them that an equation of the line is this form, y is equal to mx plus b, and so, you know, you put your m in there, and you put 
put your x and your y value in there, and you have to find some b that makes the statement true, and then you'll have an equation for a line. Well, that's deductive reasoning process. You're given the rules, and you have uh, this information that is already pre-given to you, but there is practically no real self-exploration as to uh, what it does. Now, uh, you know, you ask the reg uh, a regular teacher, uh, why don't you teach it in an exploratory way? And the teacher will look at you and say, who has the time? Have you seen what they give me to, uh, to do uh, in the length of the course? I've got all this material. I've got to cover. Well, the, what does that do? That means is that uh, we're trying to feed our children information, but we are not necessarily educating them. This is a very, very different thing. So, uh, deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning, since we already have the rules, can be very, very powerful. Yes, they will come to a conclusion, and if you have taught them well, they will get the right answer, and then you can go on and say, yes, you have learned how to do this. Doesn't necessarily mean they know why it works, okay? But they will have at least done something that they will be able to show some positive result on some end of grade test or some federally mandated uh, test to uh, uh, try to prove that they are learning something. Okay. On the other hand, inductive reasoning is a whole lot less testable. Uh, how can you test inductive reasoning? Uh, you get the answer right, or they know how to do the process. How do you test inductive reasoning? Well, inductive reasoning takes an awful lot more time to do it. And there's an awful lot of processes involved, and I have to say that uh, we really don't see how uh, the working of this <clears throat> quite as readily. But inductive reasoning is much more powerful an educational tool than deductive reasoning. And uh, I wish we could use it a lot more often.